Okay, so let's start the new looking ahead talk. Today's our guest will be Charles from Lagos in Nigeria. He's the executive secretary of Institute for Work and Family Integration. And he will tell us briefly how to advocate the family values and how to establish good family relations based on his country and his experience. So let's go and hear how, how he managed to, to achieve that. And then we will have some questions to, to our guest. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mateus. Will I be able to share my screen? <laughs> yes, of course. Not yet. I believe now you can. Okay, yeah. All right, just a minute. Okay. So, greetings from Africa. <laughs> Um, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining the um, session from. I am um, Charles Aigbona, the Executive Secretary for the Institute for Work and Family Integration. Today, I shall share with you a bit of my journey, and um, after which I will tell you what we do at the Institute. And hopefully I would... Um, end with some key um, success values, after which um, I hope to learn from your comments, your thoughts, your questions, and, and what have you. All right, so I am a, a, a pharmacist, um, studied pharmacy at the University of Benin, somewhere in Nigeria, somewhere in Africa. I was involved in community practice on my pharmacy, and did quite some consultancy services for several NGOs. And just to mention that during this period, I was volunteering in different associations, planning conferences, served as MC, as TV moderation, moderator, which actually led to my being a TV presenter for some years and being a professional MC. I specialized data in pharmacology and toxicology. Then I took a break from pharmacy and I joined the family space. The family space is actually quite exciting because everyone you talk to about the work and family issues, they kind of understand and connect with you, unlike in pharmacology that required a selective audience. Then I joined the Institute for Work and Family Integration. Now, just to mention that quite a number of the volunteering um, activities I engaged with while in pharmacy practice came in quite handy in ATMA at the Institute for Work and Family Integration. I joined the Institute as a conference manager. Even then, I took other assignments, facilitating sessions, collecting data, and all that. It led to my being um, for one appointment from one appointment to the other, from being research administrator, head of advocacy. Then I went ahead to do my master's in business administration at Lagos Business School. At the end of my program, I was appointed at the, as the executive secretary of the institute. So what do we do at the institute? The Institute for Work and Family Integration is a non-governmental, not-for-profit organization. Through its research, training, and advocacy activities, IWFI aims at providing solutions to work and family conflicts arising from social demographic shifts with a view to creating better families, better businesses, and better society. So how do we do this at the Institute for Work and Family Integration? We begin with research. We conduct research into work family issues so that our propositions are not based on innuendos or on, on, or on anecdotes, but rather on facts. From these facts, we provide solutions, preferred solutions and interventions. We then create programs from these facts as interventions that will help and resolve the solutions or the resolve the issues or the challenges we found from 
our research research studies. So that's how we go about doing what we do at the institute. So now let's look at a bit, let's look at some of these interventions which have been designed as as programs or advocacy um, outreach. The first I would like to begin with is the um, executive teachers program in integral student education. From our research found um, work, we found out that about 73% are dual income any couples in the section of in Lagos. And as such, the parents, the spouses have delegated their parental responsibility to people who are either not trained for it or are not interested in it. Um, so with this program, we try to, we, we, we foster parental involvement in the education of children, helping um, making parents realize that the first educator of their children. And also we have also created a spread this message by organizing a, some advocacy sessions on the family and the SDGs where we, um, we, we collaborated with uh, IFFD and the United Nations and we got the different policy makers in the state and in the country to come together. Let's see how parents can be more involved in the education of their children. Then we have the, the work family integration um, programs. I've given and um, been invited for, I've had speaking slots, invited to speak in different parts of the country on work and, and family issues. Um, speaking to them about the different challenges that will arise from work and family conflicts and how the family should not suffer because of work and how the work can be impacted by the, the family. So from these advocacy sessions, we developed workshop training that we give to product and we, we offer to companies and where we um, train them on the knowledge and skill to enhance productivity at work, as well as to why they are having successful careers, they will also um, be able to achieve a fulfilled family life, thereby integrating both domains, their work domain and the family domain. We also monitor and evaluate the behavioral changes from those that have participated in these particular trainings and, and workshop. Now, no matter how hard you try to integrate your family with your work, you would not be able to succeed much if your current organization does not provide that enabling environment. And what I mean by enabling environment is actually pro if they don't have family responsible policies in that organization. Therefore, the institute has taken it upon itself to explain to organizations um, the productivity benefits of family responsible policies. We have also gotten companies that have good family responsible policies to share with the others what productivity benefits they are having from these policies, one, and also how these could also affect the bottom line. This strategy was adopted because in the corporate world and speaking with CEOs and HR directors, you need to speak with them in a language you understand. And what you understand is uh, employee satisfaction, employee engagement, employee journey, bottom line. So from our research, we'll be able to link how having these policies will, will affect and impact these things they are, they are interested in and as such um, have high impact they are facing. We've also gone ahead to, we conduct a, an annual study, um, Corporate Family Responsible um, Index. And if these were able to rank different companies in, in Lagos based on their family responsible policies. And we give awards as it were to the top ranking ones so as to foster these family responsible policies in, in organizations. Um, I would proceed to one of the last programs on, on my list, um, although the programs keep on increasing as we do research 
We find out more challenges. We design programs. We design interventions and all that. So the last I will talk about today before I hear from you is the is the married couples relationship program. And the, the couples, the, the, the spouses are actually principal players in family space. And we at the Institute, we believe that what apply, the principles that apply for business apply in marriage. So people put a lot of effort to ensure that their business succeed by going to trainings, by having strategic plans, by carrying their the stakeholders and the partners along, by doing all this. However, in marriage, people just hope that the things will work out just by itself. And family, they hope that the things will just turn out well. The kids will be well brought up and everything will move smoothly. Uh -uh, we say that is not, um, that's not gonna happen. That we have to be deliberate about success in the family. We have to be deliberate about success in marriage. And as such, we, we help them to see how they can apply the principles that helps, that helps us to be successful in business, how it can help them to be successful in marriage. So we engage in things like, um, so this program actually is, a, is like a weekend retreat for couples. So it needs, we, we teach them communication skills. They do quite a number of exercises. The career dialogue, we help them to align the two spouses to align their goals and their value. Help them to develop a strategic plan for happiness in their marriage. Um, just when you have five years strategic plan in, in businesses. To conclude, well, um, I would say that um, two key success values I have um, come, I've, um, I've, um, I see, I would like to highlight, is um, first um, a spirit of service, to imbibe the spirit of service in everything you do in your career, because it's, that's what led to voluntary services, and then also to, to the skills that help um, me in other things, I, I, in the things I do. And then finally, is that we should seek to add value, always seeking to add value. And then to end, to say, building relationships and begin to take on um, extra assignments in the tax you're engaged, on, engaged in. So I will end here. So I would like to hear from you your thoughts, your questions, and then I will continue the discussion. Thank you, Mateus. Okay, thanks really much. Do you have any questions? Please, oh, here is one. Can you give us a panoramic view of Nigeria, population and social situation and situation of the family? Um, okay, very well. So Nigeria is a country in, in Africa. Um, and we are, we are made up of, um, we still maintain the traditional family of, of a man, and woman um, being a husband and wife and and then okay so i think it's good to establish that in nigeria we still believe in um, large families um, although they um, we're also getting influence from um, the western culture of having um low of trying to reduce the number of, of families in, 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 in Nigeria, the family structure is kind of patriarchal. By this, I mean the man is still uh, largely the breadwinner, is largely, the, is largely is responsible for the family, um, is in charge, is the mayor is the, of the family, that kind of thing. So Nigeria has a population of uh, 201 million, at least as at our 2019 um, census census recording. Um, so that is what you have in a family. Now, although we say Nigeria is one country, but we're made up of different, um, different um, ethnic groups. And one is clearly different from the other. You know, in the northern part of the country, they are mainly, um, predominant religion there is, is Muslim. 
So you could have like a man, a web polygamy, a man can marry several wives. Okay, you move to the south where is uh, the majority is the population is majority Christians, and as such, is really something like one man, one one, one wife. So, and uh, this is the kind of thing you you have. Um, yeah, I don't know if that situates where where we are. Uh, although I can continue talking with you about Nigeria, I love my country. Well, I believe you have in Nigeria one of the biggest fertility rates uh, in the whole world. And what is causing that? I mean, you mentioned that you have big families, but why is it the culture thing or why you are tending to have so many kids? In okay, I'll take family? you back to, to history to say that um, one is, um, we, we started off with, um, with farming, agriculture. And for agriculture, it's a, um, not industrial agriculture, but rather you have um, subsistence agriculture. So with this, you have um, a man having to to till the soil. So the more the children, the number, more the number of wives he has, the more children he can produce. And I saw the more hands he has in the family. That is one. Second is okay. I agree. We've moved. We're already moving from. We have, we have moved from that angle. But secondly, do we have the in some countries, you know, in some ethnic groups, that the, the children are a blessing from God. So you don't want to reduce the blessing from God. And in fact, at times we say, there's an ethnic group that says you don't count the children because you don't count God's, God's blessing. Thirdly, I would say for insurance, because we really, we, there's a lot of desire in our social security system. So for your old age, the more the number of children you have, the greater your chances of having some that are successful, and the greater chance of you having those that are successful, the greater the chances you have some taking care of you when you are old. So you don't want to uh, reduce your chances of being taken care of when you are old. So that is really one thing why we have, why I have this. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the a contraceptive mentality that, okay, is creeping in gradually, and how um, the demographic shift in the workplace, which is our main focus, how is actually gradually affecting this in Nigeria, especially in um, cities like Lagos, with um, and while any and while any and income couples, and as such, you know, people want to and reduce the expenditure. Children are then seen as expenses rather than before where they are seen as um, assets. Okay, Mateus. Thanks, we have another question. Which of the many projects you do particularly uh, care about and why? Which is your like the most important for you? Wow, I, I would say the, the married couples relationship program to me has the, the immediate effect, immediate impact. Because we start the program on a Saturday and we end on Sunday. And on Sunday, you already have the couples crying, you know, crying because um, they really have drifted apart. They see that all the issues they are having were really from little things, from communication, little things like not knowing themselves, because we help them to discover the love they had at first that led them to get married at first. So that for me gives, uh, shows that immediate impact because I see, I like, I enjoy the emotional thing at the last end of the program of couples crying. However, maybe the other program which is dear to my heart is the, is the um, work family conference. Maybe because I started with that and I saw that is simply because um, I get to talk with the corporates and then I think that um, I'll be able to affect policies that will affect much more people that will join the workforce in the future. Okay, you've talked about impact. So what, is, what do you think has the main impact on society 
what actions like uh, conferences, workshops, as you mentioned, article you are producing. What is the, okay. the most power, powerful tool for you, for you, actually? Okay. Now, I, I, we work from this angle and I will explain. Um, the society is made up of families. The family is the unit of society. So when we are working on the family, we see it translating to and the, the society from uh, what I'm going to from this being unit of society, family being unit of unit of society, is also that they are producing children from these families that are being fed into the society. So if we are avoiding, if our programs is having impact on the family and as such parents are involved in the moral upbringing of their children, then we are having less delinquency, less children delinquency. We are having less children going to drugs and crime. We are having lower crime rates in society. Then also, if we are changing the family, one individual at a time, in terms of one family at a time, one person at a time, one spouse at a time, then we're talking about healthy marriages. So when you have healthy marriages, you will have re, um, decrease in domestic violence. And also you will read, read in the news of spouses murdering themselves. So it behoves me to mention that how come from, they must have been in love to have married to start with and then they have grown over the years and this love has dwindled to hatred so much so that to the hatred of the hatred that to, to wishing the other one dead that leads leading to these these mothers and as such when these are programs the married couple relationship program serves to avoid serves to prevent these mothers in in uh, in society i can go on and on but maybe i'll stop here so i can take more questions Matthias. Okay, so I believe we have time for one, two more questions. There is a question okay. about the, uh, the age, actually. Is that true generally in Nigeria, people tend to have kids at a younger age compared to Europe? How such young adults become independent and responsible for their families still being so young? Um. You know, when you say Nigeria, okay, we, uh, I don't know if you think of it as one small city or one street. Um, but just to say that, fine, in the north, the children have, um, the people have ch children at a younger age. This is because of the system. Um, there, there's um, lower, there's low emphasis on education and as such, um, the the children after a particular age, the, the girls are, made, are married off at tender age of um, 16, 17. Um, now, I also mentioned about the patriarchal uh, structure of the society in the sense that the man is then responsible, the man who now has a couple of wives and these children is responsible for, for their upkeep. And um, unfortunately, perhaps maybe uh, because of the poverty level, is not able to maybe cater for them. So the thing, this, these children have been born by these less um, by these, um, young young adults. So you could say the thing could could spiral down like that. But however, just to say that in other parts of the country in the south, this is not the case. In fact. What you have is people ha don't get married on time because they want to be, they want security, a sense of security. So they want to have um, a house, they want to have a steady job, they want to have certain level of um, comfort. And in fact, they would even seek one of the qualities um, in trending, I mean, in perhaps in the South is um, you, the, the choice of, of a life partner is that she should be um, employable or she should be of some economic status as well, because you want um, 
both of you to, to be able to join forces and of income to bring up the children. So there's there's even in the South a delayed age of marriage and even delayed age of having having children. So these are what we have in these two different sectors. Okay, so I believe we have to end soon. So I have just one more question. What is your tip for, for example, Europe society to empower the family impact, to strengthen the family bonds, to actually slightly raise in some country the fertility rate, which is dropping low, low pretty, pretty quickly? Yes, now I think there have been quite a number of initiatives in, in um, increasing fertility rates from governments giving policy, um, giving incentives for people to have more children. One, that's one aspect. And the second is for children, for parents who have many children, giving them certain incentives um, of um, tickets, certain incentives they can, they would also have if they have, since they have many more children. So the burden is not much on them. So that is one. Second is, uh, for the family in, in Europe, one thing I see here in Nigeria is that we have the extended family support. So um, it, it says a lot, it, it, it says a lot of good here. Yeah. First is in um, nursing, the, your grand, nursing, nursing children, you call your, your mother, who is your grandmother, and this serves as, as a family support. So this extended family support of uncles, of, of, of extended family support, let me end it that way, serves to really help to strengthen the family. And also because of this extended family support, it leads couples to be together for longer and lead them to see that, okay, there's no going back in this. And as such, let's stay together because we have, um, we, are, we, we have so many people in the family looking at us that will not uh, support our, our separation. Um, so these are two tips I think can help you in Europe. Things you, should, you can learn from Africa. Okay, so maybe right now we, we can turn our cameras on to wave to our guest. I remind us our guest was Charles from the Executive Secretary of the Institute for Worker and Family. So we can all say thanks for the thanks meeting. for having me thanks for having me and ifd thanks very much and goodbye i like the questions i learned a lot i learned a lot okay so thanks really much for your experience and see you in the next looking ahead